conceptual people talk Real about talk, it, it throwing shots. all of the elements States national anthem and uh, players from the Miami Dolphins came out and said that they will not come onto the field uh, doing that they feel like it's an empty gesture and a bunch of other things I, I want to talk real briefly about this I'm not going to put a whole lot of energy and time into it because I think there are other things that we really should be focusing on first and foremost you got to understand that the NFL is still the NFL it's uh, 32 billionaires and the people that they have brought in to run their multi-billion dollar, I think it's somewhere 13, 14 billion dollar a year organization and industry. Um, it's an industry that has become so powerful that it has surpassed the church in the sense of prevalence on Sundays. Uh, statistically speaking, based on studies and interviews done, surveys done. So there are a lot of people out there. Now, what we fail to realize, first and foremost, is that while black players make up over 70% of the talent on the field, the vast majority of the fans are not black. The vast majority of the fans are non-black. The average black person cannot afford NFL tickets and definitely can't afford season tickets. They are not the primary revenue generators for the NFL. So you can expect some people in the stand to not have a clear, first and foremost, understanding of what's going on. And for that to be many who don't care, many who prefer the status quo. So that should not be uh, something that surprises us. What we should be focusing on is what I consistently talk about, and that's building for ourselves. We spend so much time with our feelings hurt. We spend so much time worrying about what some white person said or what some white person or white group did. That shouldn't be our concern. Uh, my, one of my favorite quotes, you guys know this, is an African proverb that says, well, there's no enemy on the inside, the enemy on the outside can do us no harm. We need to worry about dealing with the enemies on the inside. And no, I'm not a person that's pushing that bullcrap agenda by black on black crime. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is when we strengthen our fortresses mentally, emotionally, psychologically, academically, historically, when we strengthen our, our, our fortresses and we begin to be proactive in our in realities, we will create a situation in which it doesn't matter what other people think. It doesn't matter what other people do. We will be fortified, we will be strong, we will have momentum, we will build. Without unity and building, without a focus on healing uh, multi-generational trauma, without healing uh, the erroneous concepts and thoughts and ideas that are directly linked and anchored into chattel slavery, we're gonna consistently have problems until we stop seeing them as our savior until we stop looking and begging and pleading and asking 
for them to do something for us that we are more than capable of doing ourselves. Now, here's the thing. It's not going to be easy. And that's one of the things. We want somebody to lay it out for us. We want somebody to do it for us. We want somebody to take over 400 years since 1619 of oppression and turn a switch and change it. When everything that this company is built on was predicated by that oppression. We have to understand that the unraveling of this racial caste system means a complete shift in national and cultural paradigms that most people who have access to power don't want to see because it doesn't look the same. It will not be the same. And so you're going to have resistance. I told you so many times that until uh, Neely Fuller Jr. said this long before I started presenting my, my premise on the matter. He said that until you understand white supremacy racism, until you, uh, until you understand how it affects you, how it impacts you, how it operates, everything you think you know will only confuse you. Here's the thing. We have to gain an understanding of how this works. I've told you many times before. You have to see racism for what it is. Racism isn't the ends, it's a means. What means is it? It's a means to the protection of elitism and classism. It's elitism and classism that's the ultimate monster. It's people who have all the power and wealth trying to keep it. And racism is simply a mechanism through which it's done. And we have to understand that. And we have to operate based off of our understanding of it. We cannot operate from emotion. We cannot operate by begging people. Begging is a sign of weakness. We must operate and make our presence felt by the actions we take. We've got to get behind people who have the answers. We've got to sit up and invest in the answers, invest in the solutions, move towards something. Stop whining, stop complaining, stop finger pointing. Stop. Everybody's to blame for where we're at except us being inactive. The truth of the matter is, once we become active, proactively engaged in our own empowerment. There's absolutely no force that can stop us. Is it gonna be easy? No. Are, are they gonna lay down and just roll over? Absolutely not. We cannot make our decisions predicated on their compliance. We make our decisions based on the commitment that we're gonna rise. That's my statement, that's where I want us to get. Stop worrying about what they're doing. Until the players in the NFL and the NBA make a choice that they're going to pull their talent and they're going to use their leverage and their momentum and their access and their resources to build something that we can be proud of as a people own and control, that's going to always be the case. That's going to always be the case until they see the value that they bring to the table and then leverage that value. It's always going to be the case. And as long as we've got people on the outside whispering in their ears, telling them to calm down, step back, stand down, they're never going to do it because they're going to think about their comfort before they think about the commitment to the people. It's just that simple. On that note, I'm going to get out here. You guys have an unbelievable day. Hopefully we'll talk soon. Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement. For those who have followed me for any stretch of time, you know outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you.
From a conceptual standpoint, people talk about it. All of the elements 